Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Rasan427, and today what we're going to be doing is the Survivor Series War Games 2023 predictions, which will take place in Chicago, Illinois. You know, live from I believe what is it the um what is it Allstate Arena? I believe is that what it's called? I believe it's Allstate Arena. But I believe it's the Allstate Arena, Chicago, Illinois, November 25th. And, you know, this is something that I'm really looking forward to. I think the undercard, it could go either way. It could be mid or it could be really great. I think it just depends on the uh, match card and stuff like that. But let's actually jump right into it. And let's just talk about first match I want to talk about is the Anacado Championship. And with this match, I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win. Let's just see the story that they tell inside this match and how they build up the Miz. The Miz is babyface. He's usually not babyface. To be honest, his best friends has always been a heel. But I do think that he'll play He'll play great off for Gunther. I do think this would be a really good match. I think this would be a surprisingly really good match. This isn't the first person I would choose Gunther to face just because Miz is better as a heel. And it's just like you would think that Ricochet or maybe Bronson Reed would face off against Gunther. But I do think this is great. You get the spotlight on the Miz. This is his first big match inside of a while. Because I don't, what's, he wasn't on Mania card. He got squashed in like two nights in a row. I believe he was in that battle royal for SummerSlam. That's what I believe he was in. So he didn't even have a big match at SummerSlam. But in Survivor Series, he's getting a big match, big spotlight. Longest reign in the Champion. It kind of makes sense because the Miz is like one of the greatest in the Champions. Now, I believe Jericho has the record. I believe Miz is like number two with the record. So with her most reign. So it kind of makes sense. So you basically have... I know he doesn't, the Miz hasn't had the most reigns, but you pretty much have the most reigns versus the longest reigning champion of the modern era, to be honest. Just stuff like that. But you basically have the two, probably the two best Incarnate champions in like the last 20 years. The Miz, before Gunther came, he was the best Incarnate champion to me personally of the modern era. I can't really think of anybody else modern era, like from like 2000s on, who's better than Miz as Incarnate champion. But of course, I got Gunther picking up the victory. I think he'll beat him clean inside the middle of the ring. I think it's just something to get Gunther to the next step. Now, when Gunther will lose the championship, that'll be up in the air just simply because well, he, if he faces Seth Rollins at Mania, I doubt they do title for title or something like that. So if he's fighting for the world title at Mania, I think he'll drop the title or maybe he won't even fight for the world title. I think there's a chance he might actually defend the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. But a lot of people are thinking that he'll actually be world champion, which he might not even be the world heavyweight champion. So we'll just have to actually see about that. And see what's actually going on with that. Next match I actually want to talk about is Carlito versus Santos Escobar. This is a match that can go either way. Now, Carlito can win just because this is his first big match. Not his first match back. His first big match back. And you really don't want him losing just to build his credibility back up. Because a lot of people who, when he used to wrestle, didn't even watch him. A lot of people who watch it now didn't even watch him. And stuff like that. And then you got Santos Escobar who just had the big heel turn. So then you kind of got to build him up. I'm going to go with Santos Escobar picking up the victory. And he does have to win clean. That's another thing. Because he's a heel now. He does not have to win clean at all. But I'm going to go with Santos Escobar actually picking up the victory inside this match. I definitely see LWO coming out. I don't know if Ray. I don't know what's going on. Ray, he had knee surgery, which really wasn't announced or anything like that. He's going to be off a few months. I definitely think he'll be back before Mania. Because I think that's the big... If you don't, if Ray doesn't fight Dominic, I think he's fighting San, which I, fan, Santos Escobar at WrestleMania. I think that's a big WrestleMania match that you could do. I thought it would be for the U.S. Championship. It seemed like that's not the case just because Logan Paul is the champion now, which is interesting because Logan Paul hasn't been seen since Crown Jewel, and he's the U.S. champion. Now SmackDown has two champions that are mid-card champions, and they're not fighting for anything. But I think that this is a pretty good under undercard match. I think this would be a really good match right here. Next match I actually want to talk about is actually Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. And, I mean, this is pretty obvious as well. I think this can be a really good match. I'm not a big Zoe Stark fan. I like Rhea Ripley, but I'm just not a Zoe Stark fan. I would rather somebody else be in this spot. But I think that she can actually do something with the spot and actually become better. Even though I'm just not personally a fan of her, but I understand why other people are. But with Rhea Ripley, I'm going to rule Rhea Ripley picking up the victory. I think this is... Pretty obvious right here. Ray Ripley picking up victory. It's all about the story. It's like with the Gunther match. Like, they're not losing their championships. It's just, it's not happening. Especially if they had different opponents, I'd be like, you know, it's a chance, but Survivor Series, nah. No child. I don't see any title changes happen on this show at all, just to me personally, which could be, as, could, could be seen as a problem just because all the long title reigns is kind of getting predictable. It's like, are they retaining? It's every single time. But I'm going to go Ray Ripley actually picking up the victory inside this match and actually. Retaining her championship. I do think this would be a really good match. And this is just get Ray Ripley to the next show. 
just to have her with a title defense on this show right here since the other women's championship isn't going to be defended and let's get into the war games matches first war games match the women's match now for this we get four on four why do we get four and four for the woman and then five five for the man i don't understand and damage control has a fifth member so that's another weird thing i don't know if she's actually hurt now maybe that's the reason why and they just didn't want to add somebody else which why not just add another heel like anaya Jax or i mean i wouldn't really want to see her but she ain't a but I, I don't it's probably a reason why they're doing four and four i don't really understand it but you actually have damage control including asuka and eoska without um um um, what is her name? Uh, join the blank. Dakota Kai. Then versus Bianca Belair, Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Shotzi. And, you know, this can really go either way. It really, really can. I'm going to go with the baby faces, wouldn't it? Now, that might interfere with what I'm going to say later in the other War Games matches. Because I don't know if they'll do two baby face teams winning. But I'm just going to go with the baby face team winning. I mean, Damage Control has really won anything. And Eo Scott's pretty much won all her matches against all these women. So I'm going to go with the baby face. But I wouldn't be surprised if, the, if Damage Control teams win. But I'm going to go with the baby face side of this match. I'm going to go with Bianca Belair's team or Charlotte's team, whoever the team captain is. But I'm going to go with that team actually picking up the victory. I think this would be a really, really good match. Why are we getting 4-4 four and, four and not 5-5? Five and, five? and it's weird because the, with the men, they announced 5-5. Five but now they switch. I mean, they announced four and four. Now they're switching to the five and five. But will they switch this? I mean, there's a chance they can switch this to five and five before the Friday night SmackDown. Because this is the Smack. This is basics without Becky Lynch. This is Smack all SmackDown women. But on the Raw side, it's all Raw men. So they can do it either way. But I'm going with the Babyface team winning this match and picking up the victory. And I definitely see at Royal Rumble, Eo Sky dropping the title. To be honest, if she was in the War Games match, I see her drop the title at this show, but I think she'll drop the title. Or maybe I, I definitely see her dropping before Rumble, but I think she won't make it past the Rumble as the champion. Eo Sky won't. Let's get into the main event, which actually we just switched to a 5 on 5 match. You watch Money Night Raw. You get Judgment Day, all four men. You get all four. We thought that it was going to be Judgment Day and the uh, uh, Bloodline, but it's not the case. And then we thought that it was going to be a mixture of baby faces with LA Knight and all this other stuff, Randy Yorton, maybe Sam Punk. But we got a match that we really didn't expect to have. We got all Judgment Day members and Andrew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins, World Champion, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, and Randy Yorton. Now we kind of all assumed Randy Yorton, but then we thought that they what they were going to do is have Roman Reigns house match. You could set up the Randy Orton Roman Reigns rumored match. For the Royal Rumble, because I think that's pretty much the biggest, like, biggest match they can do at the Rumble. To be honest, for uh, Roman Reigns and him to have a credible opponent, unless they do LA Knight again, which I don't really know about that, but unless they do that again, and the weird thing is that LA Knight, Jimmy Uso, and Sosa Cole aren't on his show at all. So that's another interesting thing. What will they do with them? They can't really be added to this match. I what I think they'll do is do AJ Styles and LA Knight versus Jimmy Uso and Sosa Core. This is what I think they'll do with them. But I thought they would be added to this match. But I got the absolutely the baby face winning in this team, winning this match. And there's rumors about when Damian Priest will cash in. Maybe it'll be this night. I doubt it'll be on this night. Maybe the night after. Maybe Seth Rollins gets hurt. It'll be happening the night after. Or not the night after. The Monday night raw after. Or maybe coming the weeks. I think that the cash show happened in December. Whether he cashes in successfully or not, that's a whole nother question. Because from what I'm hearing and from what it seems like, they want Seth Rollins to be the champion walking into Mania unless he loses it and then wins it right back. Or unless Damien Priest just doesn't cash in completely. Because it does seem like they want Seth Rollins to walk in WrestleMania as a champion. But yeah, I definitely got the baby faces winning. I think this would be a fantastic match. I think that this would be the better than the one that they actually did last year with the Bloodline versus the Brawling Brutes and Drew McIntyre and that team. I think that this, me personally, I think that this will be absolutely better. And Cody Rhodes getting his first War Games match. You know, his father was huge into the War Games. But I think this would be an absolutely fantastic match. I think it's a lot of stories they could tell leading into this match. And hopefully we can finally end the Judgment Day versus... Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins, all this stuff, because it's really getting old. Now, who Seth Rollins faces the Royal Rumble, we'll just have to see about that. But hopefully, this is the end to that whole feud, even though I don't think it'll be the end, me personally. But tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. 
What do you what are your predictions for Survivor Series War Games 2023? Who do you have winning? Who do you have losing? What matches do you think be added? Because I don't think this will be the only matches. I think one, maybe two matches like to be added to this. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.